you hear a lot about how Seattle has been progressive on these issues uh, over the years. Where yeah. where do you think where do you feel Seattle f- has fit in the, in the movement for equality for us? You know, I that's hard to answer because I don't have experience with very many other cities, right? I've lived here since 1976. So, do you feel it's it's, it's, it's always well? It's always seemed like a challenge, because it is a challenge. But I guess other people in other places have had more severe challenges. Yeah, yeah, I could say that. Uh, I, th- I guess, um, kind of what I was getting at is that it seems like no matter what Seattle's involved in, there's no attention paid to like the you know the uh, the successes up here it seems like it's like unless it's Chicago New York uh, Los Angeles it's, if it's, yeah if you're talking about the like mainstream media yeah that's true because people think that the country ends at the Mississippi right. yeah yeah that's that's very true I just always wondered about that because you you meet so many people like yourself that have been involved in so much and it's like you know, you'd think that there would be more out there about everybody, but there isn't here. Well, just to give you an example, um, in 2008, the King County Labor Council changed its constitution to give representation to constituency organizations like Pride at Work on the executive board. Hmm. Um, AFL-CIO International back in Washington, D.C., didn't think that was a very good idea. Hmm. But people here pushed for it and the changes stuck and now it's standard in central labor councils to give representation to the constituency organizations. Wow. And maybe I should backtrack and explain that the constituency organizations represent communities that have historically been marginalized or shut out of power. like the African-American community, Mm -hmm. Asian Pacific Islanders, uh, Latinos and Latinas, and Pride at Work represents the LGBT community. So this was kind of a breakthrough, and it happened here, now standard. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, I'd have to give credit to Dave Freiboth, who's the executive secretary of the Labor Council, um, because he was on board with this right away, wow. and he was able to steer it through the Labor Council so that it didn't meet significant opposition. Now, there's been a number of things that have happened where Labor seems to be behind uh, equality, especially yeah. lately. I mean, the last couple of years, they just come right out with it. I mean, yeah. from the candidates they support to the referendums, all that stuff. Why? I mean, how does that make you feel as someone who's a part of the, the Labor Union? Um, well, it makes me feel successful, and it makes me feel that uh, all the other labor activists that I've worked with over the years have been successful, because that was one of our objectives, mm. right? It makes me feel uh, also that there's still hope for the labor movement, you know, because it's no secret the labor movement has been declining, particularly in uh, private sector employment, Um, the thing that's going to save it, at least in my opinion, is reaching out to communities and trying to build relationships with uh, community organizations and uh, folks that, you know, require allies and require representation. Right. 